The Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I too, Madam Speaker, rising to support my colleague, the MP for Kootenay Columbia, to declare the Friday after Thanksgiving National Local Food Day, and that would be very celebrated in my province of Alberta. Among those I count among the heroes of the planet are the agriculture producers of Alberta who have fought valiantly to protect agricultural lands. They've battled urban sprawl, industrial projects, and the paving over of prime agricultural lands, including my city's most frost-free productive market garden lands. For many decades, Madam Speaker, I have been honored to provide legal representation or advocacy support to many of these farmers trying to protect their productive lands. I wish to single out just a few of the names of the Alberta farmers that I honoured some years back for their personal dedication in protecting Alberta's prime agricultural lands. The Bocock family, who donated their uh, leading-edge dairy farmer to the University of Alberta for research. George Friesen and Jim Hainsworth, who founded Preserve Agricultural Land Foundation, and George, who put a covenant on his own productive land to say that he only had the right to grow and produce on his lands, not to profit from any, uh, putting a pipeline through. Jim Visser, the Kuhlmans, the Reens, Wayne Groot, a potato farmer who fought valiantly to protect the Northeast market gardeners. Doug Visser, who has mounted a major campaign to protect la Lady Flower Gardens, run by and benefiting the homeless and the disadvantaged in Edmonton who go out to grow the vegetables and take them back for their sustenance. Many hundreds of Edmontonians attended hearings on calls to preserve our Northeast market gardens who produce healthy local food for Edmontonians. Many Edmonton restaurants now feature locally produced food. Many bakeries produce um, baked goods using local grains, including my favorite and very popular neighborhood bakery, the Boulangerie Bonjour. Among the greatest tributes I have received in my life is a lifetime membership in the Preserve Agriculture Land Foundation. Since childhood, I have accompanied parents, grandparents, and now friends and constituents to the downtown market and now the Strathcona market in Old Strathcona and La Cité, the centre, the Cartier Francophone of Edmonton, the only one in Canada. I not only try to visit my market each Saturday, Saturday I regularly buy local organic carrots, parsnips and berries and put them in my carry-in luggage, which really throws off the security officers every week. <laughs> A growing number of community gardens across my riding and the city are growing local produce for Edmontonians. The Green and Gold Garden at uh, South Alberta University campus for 10 years has been producing local produce, but they also, with the funds, go for global benefits and it profits a women's collective in Rwanda. Another garden close to the University of Alberta provides fresh produce to the food banks. Last year, Danielle Monroe worked with the Youth Empowerment and Support Services persuading the city to let them plant vegetables in a large empty lot across from the YES project, and it became a popular drop-in centre for everybody in the city to come to. Now, an Edmonton Food Council has created support for urban beekeeping and hens, piloting local lot cultivation across the street from me in an empty lot. There is now competition for who can grow the most local vegetables. Not to mention provincial support for local craft breweries and distilleries, many of which are in my riding and uh, people are enjoying, particularly the locally crafted gin. Um, we must also recognize the importance and acknowledge the treaty rights uh, uh, of Indigenous peoples to harvest their local foods. And I've worked closely with First Nation adjacent to a lake where I've spent my, my summers, where they are concerned that they are losing the ability to harvest their local medicines. Very important to consider that in projects being proposed. The province of Alberta have actually taken new steps to raise the profile of local food production, supporting $1 billion towards local food industry. They've tabled the Supporting Alberta's Local Food Sector Act, raising the profile of local food industry, strengthening consumer confidence in local foods, identifying solutions and challenges faced by local producers and processors, supporting sustainable growth in the agriculture and food processing. They've established a local food council and declared a new Alberta local food week the third week of August which will be a good lead into the, the Friday before Thanksgiving um, they they provide level playing field for certified local organic farmers and processors and build the trust in the purchase of local foods 
Local food sales in Alberta from farmers markets and through direct to consumer channels have more than doubled since 2008, exceeding $1 billion alone last year. And now we have several companies in Edmonton who are delivering this local produce to my, my constituents' doors. It's important to recognize that what is considered local food is now very diverse. And there are many in my constituency have actually established community gardens for new immigrants so that they can grow the vegetables and produce that they are used to. And so with that, Madam Speaker, I will close so that there's plenty of time for my colleague to give his final comments on this very important bill.